China has carried out what it says is a mock air blockade of Taiwan using jets carrying live ammunition. China has long been recognized as having one of the world's most powerful armed forces. They recently launched a terrifying technological advancement, a dangerous nuclear space missile. This has heightened fear in the United States and sparked concerns concerning the militarization of space. What does this mean for international relations? How will the U.S. respond to this unexpected development? Join us as we explore how China shocks the U.S. with a terrifying nuclear space missile. The United States is the unopposed leader in global military spending, spending $778 billion on its armed forces in 2020. This figure amounts to 39% of total global military expenditure and is more than three times that of China, the world's second highest spender. On the other hand, China is not far behind in terms of military development and innovation. Every year, China increases its expenditure on defense by an average of 6.8%. Its increasing military prowess has worried U.S. experts, who have urged the U.S. to keep up with Beijing's fast modernization and arsenal development. One of China's latest and most powerful weapons has caught the U.S.'s interest, a hypersonic glide vehicle capable of transporting nuclear bombs. This weapon is totally different from traditional missiles, the hypersonic glide vehicle can enter space, rapidly orbit the Earth, and then decline through the atmosphere toward its target. This feature makes it highly challenging to detect and intercept, given its ability to maneuver unpredictably and evade existing missile defense systems. The Financial Times reported that China has tested this weapon, which poses a significant threat to international stability and the national security of the U.S. Although the U.S. is also working on creating hypersonic weapons, it is not as advanced as China's. The stakes are pretty high in the quest for hypersonic supremacy. The report by Financial Times also cited five officials who confirmed the test, claiming that the U.S. administration was taken off guard. This weapon can attack any area on Earth with great precision and little warning, which makes it a severe danger to the United States and its allies. China conducted the test in August 2023 by launching a Long March 2C rocket into orbit. The Long March 2C rocket took launch on Tuesday at 6.53 p.m. EDT from the Taiyuan Satellite Launch Center in Shangxi Province, North China. A hypersonic glide vehicle was on board, detachable from the rocket to go in a low orbit above Earth. However, China did not disclose the launch of this rocket unlike its previous launches of missiles. The hypersonic glide vehicle re-entered the atmosphere and headed to a target location in the Pacific Ocean. Out of the five officials reported by Financial Times, three sources briefed on the intelligence said the missile missed its target by around two dozen miles. However, two others said that the test proved China's incredible advancements in hypersonic weapons and that U.S. authorities were underestimating their abilities. The test has sparked new concerns about why the United States frequently underestimated China's military modernization. China considered the test successful even though the missile missed its target by almost 20 miles. The missile can be equipped with a nuclear warhead or depend only on its kinetic energy to deal massive damage. The concept for this warhead weapon began during the Cold War in the 1960s. The Soviet Union came up with a groundbreaking idea to launch nuclear warheads into low Earth orbit and then deorbit at the right time to strike American cities and any location on Earth. This is known as the Fractional Orbital Bombardment System, FOBS. Unlike traditional ballistic missiles that follow a predictable trajectory during re entry into the Earth's atmosphere, FOBS takes a fractional orbital path. This makes its course highly unpredictable and more challenging to defend. China's weapon uses a more advanced hypersonic glide vehicle in place of a standard re-entry vehicle. The FOBS has been a source of concern because of its unique features. FOBS can avoid missile defense systems and many early warning systems. 
While FOBs can carry out attacks similar to traditional intercontinental ballistic missiles, ICBMs, they approach targets from unexpected directions. Based on information gathered by U.S. intelligence, the nuclear warhead mass of the FOBs needed to be half to one-third that of an ICBM. They also require a more robust ablative system due to the higher entry velocities. In short, the FOBs is less accurate than an ICBM. In order to reach their targets, FOBs travel irregular routes into orbit and then re-enter Earth's atmosphere. This contrasts with ICBMs, which have more predictable altitudes and re-entry tracks. Also, their unpredictable nature makes it difficult to detect and intercept them. It, in turn, reduces the effectiveness of traditional missile defense strategies. Estimating the sites of FOB strikes is more difficult because their operational range extends beyond that of ICBMs. A hypersonic missile that could strike any target while orbiting the Earth would be terrifying to any defense system. Unlike conventional missiles, which have a defined path, hypersonic missiles can travel all across the world and unleash strikes from any direction. It is also hard to identify and intercept because it can change its route and speed at any time. This weapon is innovative for warfare and gives China a significant advantage over the U.S. The U.S. has systems that can monitor and counter missiles moving in a ballistic direction, meaning that they rise and fall in a fixed arc. These systems can track the flight path and impact location of these missiles and try to shoot them down. However, the U.S. systems aren't equipped to handle a weapon that can orbit the Earth and go through the atmosphere at hypersonic speed. This weapon has a range of thousands of miles from its launch location to strike an elliptical target. Moreover, it can navigate in the air and avoid the typical paths taken by missiles. It can also launch an attack from the south, where the U.S. has weak defense and coverage. A hypersonic weapon that can orbit the Earth and glide through the air is almost impossible to stop using the latest defensive technologies. Taylor Fravel, a professor at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, an expert on Chinese nuclear weapons strategy, and a member of the board of directors of the National Committee on U.S.-China Relations, was not aware of the test. Taylor said, A hypersonic glide vehicle armed with a nuclear warhead may enable China to negate U.S. missile defense systems meant to neutralize incoming ballistic missiles. Hypersonic glide vehicles fly at lower trajectories and can maneuver in flight, which makes them hard to trace and destroy. Taylor Fravel added, it would be destabilizing if China fully developed and deployed such a weapon. Still, he cautioned that a test did not necessarily mean Beijing would deploy the technology. The United States is currently developing countermeasures to this hypersonic weapon, although they are not yet prepared. They face many challenges such as tracking and identifying the weapon, keeping up with its rapid speed and flexibility, dealing with multiple weapons at the same time, and coordinating with other sensors and systems. The U.S. has publicly expressed its worry about this weapon. A few months ago, U.S. Air Force Secretary Frank Kendall stated that China has made substantial progress in this area, even hinting at the risk of global space-based attacks. Kendall claimed that China may have developed a system similar to the USSR's fractional orbital bombardment system during the Cold War, but he did not provide details. According to Kendall, adopting such a strategy would evade traditional ICBM paths and offer a way to get past defenses and missile warning systems. General Glenn Van Herc, a commander of the North American Aerospace Defense Command, also worried about China's recent display of highly superior hypersonic glide vehicle weapons. He warned that the Chinese capabilities will make it hard to figure out and warn about possible attacks and assess how serious they could be. Despite these worries, China has the most extensive fleet of conventional submarines, estimated to be between 60 and 70 ships, they also have 20 nuclear-powered submarines, four of which are ballistic missile submarines that can fire nuclear bombs. The country has been steadily updating its submarine fleet, 
and by 2030 it should have 76 vessels. Lithium batteries might soon be added to some of these submarines to improve their performance and stealth. China's submarine force poses a severe threat to the U.S. and its allies, especially in the Indo-Pacific area. The country uses its submarines to intimidate possible enemies and impose territorial claims. The U.S. and its allies made attempts to monitor China's submarine operations and improve anti-submarine warfare capabilities. But China's submarines are more sophisticated and discreet, making it harder to identify and defeat them. China recently unveiled a guided missile submarine, one of its most sophisticated vessels. This kind of submarine is capable of underwater guided missile launches. There are two primary types of guided missile submarines, ballistic missile submarines, SSBNs, and cruise missile submarines, SSGNs. SSBNs feature nuclear-armed missiles that can reach locations thousands of kilometers away, preventing nuclear assaults. Conversely, SSGNs feature both conventional and nuclear weapons. This makes them versatile for various missions, including ground assaults, anti-ship combat, and special operations. According to a Pentagon study on October 20th, the submarines seen in Chinese shipyards over the last year and a half are Type 093B guided missile submarines. These are the first Chinese military submarines with the ability to launch cruise missiles and fire vertically. According to the Pentagon report, the new SSGNs include torpedoes, anti-ship and ground assault cruise missiles, and an advanced sonar system. The report states that China's submarine fleet may expand further with the possible deployment of three of these new SSGNs by the following year. In May 2022, Reuters shared satellite images of the Holaya shipyard in northeastern China. These images revealed the construction of a new or updated submarine class. What caught the attention of many was the possibility of vertical launch tubes for cruise missiles. The submarine had a prominent hump behind the sail, which indicated the presence of vertical launch tubes. This submarine was longer than the earlier Type 093 models, suggesting a revised design. According to analysts and defense experts, this submarine is anticipated to be in service by the end of the decade, equipped with a JL-3 SLBM that has a range of more than 9,000 kilometers. With the JL-3 SLBM, China may be able to deliver a credible second-strike nuclear weapon from the Chinese seas to targets in the U.S. and Europe. The Type 096 submarine is expected to have better stealth and acoustic features. Researchers presented alarming results during a May conference at the U.S. Naval War College. These findings were eventually published in August by the China Maritime Studies Institute. Their main concern was the increasing difficulties of monitoring these highly advanced and hidden Chinese naval vessels. The report was based on discussions with military attachés and experts. The military experts expressed concern about the possibility that China's submarines could compromise the security of countries in the Indo-Pacific area, as well as freedom of movement. In response to the problem of identifying China's nuclear-powered ballistic missile submarines, the U.S. Navy and other military in the Indo-Pacific area have increased deployments and preparations for possible situations. Their efforts became more focused as the Type A-96 submarines started emerging. The purpose of these deployments is to improve preparation and monitoring for any future operations using these cutting-edge vessels. China now conducts fully armed nuclear defensive patrols in the South China Sea using its older type O-94 submarines, which are stationed off Hainan Iceland. However, there were concerns about the Type 094's vulnerability to detection because of its sound profile. This means they are more prone to tracking by the anti-submarine warfare ASW equipment of the U.S. and Allied forces. Even with China's advanced JL-3 missiles aboard, Type 094 submarines are detectable in the water. 
The China Maritime Studies Institute's document also states that the Type 096 submarine would be compared to the most advanced Russian submarines, with special focus paid to stealth, sensors, and weaponry. It has been projected that construction on the Type 096 submarine, which will be equipped with the JL-3 SLBM, will begin in the early 2020s. The submarine is also expected to have better stealth and acoustic capabilities, thanks to Russian technology and cooperation. Christopher Carlson, a retired submariner and military technical intelligence expert, stated that the Type 096 submarines will be very difficult to detect. But he admitted that China may not have gotten Russia's most recent technology. He thinks they will build a submarine that is as stealthy as Moscow's improved Akula-class vessels. According to Christopher Carlson, who spoke with Reuters, China stations SSBNs in refuges close to its coastlines, just like Russia does. This plan will take advantage of strong locations in the contentious South China Sea. The deployment of high-tech submarines with ballistic missiles makes it harder to monitor what's happening underwater, similar to how it was tough to track Soviet submarines during the Cold War. Defense expert Colin Coe, who is situated in Singapore, stressed that this study provides insight into China's efforts to improve its SSBNs and fortify its anti-submarine warfare capabilities. Ko stated that China is conscious of its lag and is actively working to catch up, especially in terms of quieting and propulsion. Carlson said that China will need to make coordinated efforts to detect and monitor its strategically placed SSBNs along its coastlines. Japan and India are working with the US, Australia, and Britain on this continuous underwater monitoring. These countries showed interest in countering China's increasing rage and naval supremacy in the Indo-Pacific area. They cooperate to improve their anti-submarine warfare capabilities by exchanging intelligence and details about China's submarine operations, working together on joint drills and patrolling the area. There is an increase in submarine hunting exercises and the use of P-8 Poseidon aircraft across Southeast Asia and the Indian Ocean. The United States, Japan, India, South Korea, Australia, the United Kingdom, and New Zealand use the P-8 Poseidon. The P-8 Poseidon is a maritime patrol aircraft used to carry out various tasks such as anti-submarine warfare, ASW, anti-surface warfare, intelligence observation, and reconnaissance. The P-8 Poseidon is equipped to carry torpedoes, missiles, mines, and sonobuoys, which transmit acoustic signals to detect submarines. It also uses surface scanning radar to detect submarines on or near the surface. These aircraft use modern techniques, such as sonobuoys and surface scanning to locate a submarines deep underwater. Furthermore, the United States is currently working on the most notable update of its highly classified underwater monitoring network, the Integrated Undersea Surveillance System, IUSS, since the 1950s. This improvement is intended to offset China's increasing naval presence. The IUSS is a worldwide network of unmanned underwater listening stations designed to detect and send underwater noises to land for study. It can track underwater communications, detect movement patterns, and detect Chinese military preparations, such as submarine deployments and strange movements. The modernization plans include equipping a fleet of surveillance ships with advanced sensors and underwater microphones, as well as upgrading the current network of undersea acoustic spy cables. In addition, the United States is investing in new technologies that will reduce and globalize old maritime surveillance instruments. This involves using unmanned sea drones to listen for submarines, installing portable underwater satellite sensors on the bottom to look for submarines, using satellites to find ships by tracking their radio frequencies and analyzing maritime spy data with artificial intelligence software. Given these improvements, China's progress in SSBNs shows a rising nuclear deterrence ability and ambition. Chinese submarines may perform a variety of duties, including information collection, anti-surface warfare, anti-submarine warfare, land attack, and nuclear deterrent.
These evolving dynamics highlight the strategic importance of improving capacities and tracking in response to regional issues. They emphasize the need for robust measures in addressing evolving threats. The threat of a quieter Chinese SSBN is one of the driving forces behind the AUKUS agreement, which involves Australia, the United Kingdom, and the United States. This agreement calls for a larger deployment of British and American attack submarines in Western Australia. AUKUS is a trilateral security collaboration that was launched on September 15, 2021, with the goal of strengthening security in the Indo-Pacific region. The US and the UK will help Australia in buying nuclear-powered submarines, which have more stealth and capabilities than conventional submarines. The collaboration includes sophisticated cyber mechanisms, AI, autonomy, quantum technologies, submarine capabilities, innovation in hypersonic and counter-hypersonic electronic warfare, and information exchange. Australia plans to build its first nuclear-powered assault submarines, integrating British technology by the 2030s. Australia's strategy calls for the acquisition of at least eight nuclear-powered assault submarines, SSNs, based on the UK's astute class design. The first Australian SSN is expected to enter service in the early 2040s, taking over the aging Collins-class diesel-electric submarines, which are likely to lose their competitiveness by the 2030s. The Australian SSNs will likely surpass the Collins class in terms of speed, endurance, range, and firepower, allowing for more effective operations in the broad Indo-Pacific area. Alexander Neal, an adjunct fellow at Hawaii's Pacific Forum think tank, emphasizes the issue, pointing out that China is developing a new generation of submarines ahead of Australia's first vessels. Even if they achieve technical equality, Neil stated the importance of China training actively and intensively over the next decade in order to match Australia's abilities. As a result, to match or surpass Australia's capabilities, China will need to devote more money and effort to training its submarine operators and improving tactics. According to Basil Cashin, a Moscow-based Chinese military specialist at HSSE University, Chinese engineers have achieved these. He also stated that China gained some vital Russian technology during the dissolution of the Soviet Union in the 1990s. In light of China's advancements in hypersonic missile technology, how should the world, especially the United States, respond to ensure global stability and security? How would you respond? Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, Make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos like this one.